Hey guys, the Fire Brothers here. It's just me. My brother couldn't be here today because he was kidnapped by the Council of the Orion Pax. That's a new one. Can we get more like my brother couldn't be here today jokes with like inbuilt images? Makes it easier on the editing. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, so today. I have a theory video for you. Shocker! I know, because it's been a while, because most of my videos lately have been talking about like the cut content for Rise of the Beast and a bunch of new stuff for reactivate and the occasional Transformers 1 reveal. But this video, we're going back to the basics and we're talking about some old, good old theories. And that is the Maximals that will be coming for the future Transformers sequel to Rise of the Beast. Now, Rise of the Beast, the sequel has been greenlit, uh, at least according to some trusted sources. Nothing has been officially stated yet, but we hear hints and rumors here that it's most likely gonna happen. And this video is also partially, you know, news information because very recently in my latest video actually, um, Stephen Capu Jr. in an interview talked about one of the Maximals he cut from the film and that was Rat Trap. He said that he wanted to add Rat Trap to the movie and he thought that having Rat Trap and Mirage in the same movie would have been hilarious. But unfortunately there were already too many robot characters and he had to call the Rat Trap. Rat Trap is one of the classic Beast Wars characters and his loss was greatly felt by many OG Beast Wars fans, myself included. But I think that him alongside many other Maximals had the chance to come back for the next movie. First off, some backstory of the Maximals. So in the movie themselves, the Maximals live on their planet, um, we don't have a name for it, we just call it the Maximal Planet, so they get attacked by Scourge and his terrible Scorponauts which don't achieve anything in the film. So Abe Link sacrifices himself, allowing the Maximals to use the Transwerp Key and the Transwerp Space Bridge to basically catapult themselves to Earth. Now something that I've seen a lot of people get wrong or like feel very um, confused about would be, do the Maximals time travel or do the Maximals just space travel and I know it's a bit confusing but watching the film a second time it became very clear that the Maximals just traveled through space so the Maximals at some point came to the past you know they are from the future as well as the past they basically mentioned it themselves they landed on the planet the maximum planet where they lived in peace until Unicron showed up, wanted to use the Transwerp key to basically have an endless source of, you know, food, you know, basically be able to travel wherever he goes. And the Maximals don't exactly travel to the past or travel to the future, they just travel to another galaxy. They actually made it very clear that Unicron's basically stuck in a galaxy that he has fully devoured without anything else to consume. That's actually the reason why Unicron says to Scourge, my hunger is killing me. So, the Maximals travel to the galaxy, our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, and travel more specifically to Earth, where they stayed right there living amongst the humans, and they separate into two groups. We have Primus Maximals, and then we have Air Racers Maximals. Primus Maximals consists of Cheeto and Rhinox, while Air Racers Maximals consists of Air Racer, and a few other Maximals that we never saw on screen. Now, I think we're gonna see which Maximals were alongside her in the next movie, and it's an easy way to go about it as well as to bring back more Maximals that were not mentioned in the movie itself. Now here's my theory. Now the Maximals separated into two groups. One was Primal and one was Air Racer to guard the Transwarp Keys. And according to Air Racer, she said that she was the last of her kind, meaning that the other Maximals are probably dead or in some type of stasis similar to Bumblebee. And we also note that Earth is somehow rich with Energon, like we saw during the Peruvian scene where Bumblebee gets revived. Energon does exist on Earth and that's actually one of the reasons why they landed on Earth, because of its abundance of Energon. Now we actually do know where Air Racer's Maximals were, they were in Sudan. Because earlier in the film when they find the Air Racer statue, pretty much mentioned that they found it in Sudan, which is a country in Africa. Meaning that that's probably the place where Air Racer and her Maximals were hiding and protecting the Transwerp key. And now here's what I think happened. I think that eventually, you know, Air Racer and her other Maximals went into stasis, you know, maybe they ran out of energy on, because I really doubt that there will be anything on Earth, especially from the humans that will be capable to kill off any, you know, fully grown Maximal. So Air Racer herself goes into stasis and places the Transwerp Key inside the Eagle statue as a way to hide it amongst the humans much like Primal did with the humans in Peru. Eventually the Air Racer statue ends up in New York in the museum and once it gets broken by Elena, it sends a powerful signal that is seen by the Autobots and my guess is that this also acted as some kind of beacon for Air Racer as a thing to wake her up. Because I find it very interesting that Air Racer only showed up in New York 
once, you know, the beacon was activated. At no point did it look like she was following the statue or that she knew it was in New York. I think as soon as she, it activated, she flew all the way from Africa, all the way to New York in order to protect it. And before you say, but fire, the beacon was activated for like less than a day. I will say maybe less than two hours, maybe four hours if we're generous. And yeah, that's true. But may I remind you that the Autobots flew from, you know, all the way to New York to Peru in less than a day. And they did that on Stratosphere, not exactly the fastest or more stable aerial Autobot out there. Air Racer is a Maximo who, who's, you know, relatively younger and I guess faster because of like her eagle mode. I think she should have no problem just traveling that big of a distance as soon as she got the beacon from the transfer key. Because as we see in the movie, she arrives just at the nick of time. Then the events of the movie happen pretty much verbatim and Air Racer ends up dying after getting Getting infected by Scourge's Dark Energon, which I'm also gonna make a video on very soon, don't worry about that. Now, I feel like the reason why the Maximal stayed in Sudan was because it probably was a place that much like Peru was kind of rich with Energon. And the way I see it, when Unicron showed up through the transfer portal and manifested on Earth, his appearance, you know, created a shockwave that empowered and, you know, reactivated the Energon around the planet. I think the best way you could like bring Aerosus Maximals back is by saying that they were probably left in stasis and you know since they couldn't be waking up they were pretty much dead and this will make Aerosus the last one of her kind at least as far as she's aware of before meeting Primal and the other Maximals in Peru. So for the sequel I think the best way to bring those Maximals back would be just to say that the shockwave was global because remember the, the whole thing with Unicron was a global event. Unicron manifested you could see him in Peru you know in like the Peruvian sky and everything but the movie shows that his presence was felt all the way over New York. We don't exactly know the radius of which you know Unicron's you know effect had on the globe. We don't know how far it went if it covered most of the planet. It was definitely a big enough event for the US government and a bunch of other governments to like realize what, what's going on. And towards the end of the movie we actually see a news report that pretty much says that there was a mysterious storm that covered the western hemisphere. So if we just do the on this map the radius from here in Peru all the way to New York it also just so happens to cover Sudan so I'm saying that the radius of Unicron's appearance the ignition of the energy could have totally reached Sudan where we know that the other bodies of the Maximus are lying in and using that same excuse to revive Bumblebee, we could totally extend that to the Maximals, who are probably buried somewhere where there's Energon available or near to them. This also begs the question that maybe Air Racer could have been revived as well and showed up in the final battle, but I mean, I'm guessing there just wasn't any Energon around her where they left her. So, so poor Air Racer got unlucky. Another way you, in which, you know, they could bring the Maximals back without having them necessarily fall randomly from the sky or come from the future or the past will be to simply say that there's more Maximals inside the Axelon. Now, when Maximals first escaped, they escaped with the ship. And they, we see it at the beginning and then it's never seen again. And in the concept of itself, at one point, the all of us were gonna go inside the Axelon where apparently they were gonna revive Bumblebee or place him in some kind of chamber that was gonna slowly, you know, uh, get him back to fighting strength. The reason why I think the Axelon was cut or at least not heard from in the Peruvian scenes is because, like, you know, the other ones kind of want to leave and, you know, the Maximus just saying, hey, we have a ship, you can just use it to leave. Kind of def defeats the conflict that they were trying to build between the Maximus and the other ones. You know, Maximus want to keep the key and not use it, the humans want to destroy it. So the Terracons can get their, their hands on it and the Autobots need it so they can get off the planet so they can go back to Cybertron. My reason is like in order to build up tension and drama between the three groups they had to call the Axelon because then they will be like hey why don't the Autobots just use the Axelon to get off and just destroy and keep the key or just destroy or keep the key away from Scourge. Saves them the trouble of having to protect them from, from the Terracons and prevents the whole Unicron threat entirely. And I think you guys can realize where I'm getting at with this. I think that the Axelon is not in Peru. I think it's probably in Sudan alongside, you know, Aether Racer and her other Maximals, or at least the, it used to be. I think that the ship was probably very deep underground or something like that. And something that you guys might know from Beast Wars is that the way that they would introduce new characters in Beast Wars was that there were these stasis pods that contained protoforms. Both Maximals and Predacons would fight over these to, you know, add new warriors to their ranks. And as we've seen from the concept art and, we, and what little we've seen from the ship itself in the movie, the ship seems to be quite big. So I'll, I'm just saying that maybe there, there are other Maximals Maximals that are in stasis in there, or maybe Maximal protoforms that could be activated with enough energon to bring back and include new Maximals for the next movie. But you guys
you guys may be thinking, but fire, if they have the protoform pods in there, why don't they just use them to just revive them and you know just have a bigger army to fight Scourge and the Terracons? And that's actually a very simple answer to that. First, if my theory is correct, the ships either in Sudan and maybe none of the Maximals there are flyers, so none of them can just fly up to New York and you know show up and you know help a racer fight off Scourge and the other Terracons. Or alternatively, if the ship's not in Sudan and, it, and the ship is somewhere buried in Peru but non functional, there's also a very simple solution. Like Primal said, the reason why they couldn't revive Bumblebee in the first place was because the energy on there is raw, you know, it, it's not refined, it's not like in a state that is strong enough to reactivate a transformer like Bumblebee. So the same logic probably applies to the maximum proloforms that are inside the stasis pod. The Maximals just don't have the resources to reactivate the Proloforms and wake up the other Maximals. Which, I know, this kinda creates a big plot hole, cause then, you know, if my theory is correct and they just don't have the resources to revive, you know, the Maximals, then it's like, okay, so they can revive the Maximals, but they can somehow build another transfer bridge in the middle of a volcano that successfully operates and activates with enough strength to bring something as big as Unicron to Earth's atmosphere. Yeah, I know, it's not a perfect theory. It has its flaws, I get it. But again, again, I feel like that's mostly the fault of the movie. I'm trying to justify some of these things, but it's kind of hard, all right? And yes, in case you guys forgot, the transfer bridge is actually a maximal creation. We don't know exactly how it works because it almost looks like magic, like stuff just manifests from the space-time continuum. Like, the whole thing with the transfer bridge is very confusing, I'll admit. But in all honesty, I think this is the best way you can bring back the Maximals. Either A, just have, you know, Eraser's Maximals, B, in Sudan, over time, they kind of, you know, run out of energy on, or they go into, into voluntary stasis to stay hidden or whatever. But because of the lack of energy on, when the transfer key gets activated, only a race has enough energy to wake up and, you know, make her way to New York to defend the key. But then, later in the movie, when Unicron shows up, the shockwave from the transfer bridge, Unicron's presence overall triggers the energon inside the Earth, you know, causing Bumblebee to re reactivate it, and causing the Maximals in Sudan to be reawakened. Therefore, bringing the title of Rise of the Beast, which my I add in Spanish, the title translates to the Beast Awakening, making the Beast awaken at the end of the film. Just in time for the sequel to introduce Rat Trap, Tigertron, and a bunch of other classic Beast Wars characters. Which, by the way, I totally do feel that if if they do introduce more Maximals in the sequel, which I, I think they will because they said they're not done with the Maximals just yet. I definitely do believe Rattrap will be one of those Maximals that will be, you know, Redcon into being one of quote-unquote Aerys' Maximals. It just makes sense, you know, Steven wants him, the fans want him, and I'll be honest, I think another Maximal we'll probably see will be Tigatron, and maybe Silverbolt as well, and I say maybe. Like, speculating which Maximals we'll see for the sequel, like, could be a video all in itself. But to be honest, I feel like at least with Air Racer's group, there were at least four Maximals total, including Air Racer. I just happen to believe that one of them is Rattrap, another one's Tigertron, and another one might be Silverbolt, or maybe even Depth Charge. I think Depth Charge will fit, considering so the Ant's relative location. You either go the Bloomby way of reviving them, or you just go the OG Beast Wars way, in which, you know, they have portal forms there until they're activated and they're scanned a Beast Mode, they're just gonna lay doormen until they're needed. Or the Maximals have the means to revive them, which now, thanks to Unicron, unintentionally, they now have the means to do so, more or less. But yeah, guys, that's just a theory. A trans theory! Thanks for watching. It's been a while since I said that. Anyways, so yeah, that's my crazy theory as to, you know, who are Eraser's Maximals, where are they, what happened to them, and how can they come back for the sequel? I feel like either explanation works for me, like either the Unicron Revive method or maybe the, you know, Stasis Portal Form method from Beast Wars. Either or could work for the sequel, in all honesty. And also, Steven, if you're watching this, you're more than welcome to steal my idea. You're welcome. But let me know in the comments down below. Do you guys agree with my Stasis Pod theory or my Unicron Revival theory as to, you know, being a potentially good way, as being a potential way to bring, you know, new Maximals for the sequel or even revive some of the ones that are supposedly dead or in Stasis? Or maybe you have an alternative theory and if so i would love to hear it in the comments down below again they could go the lazy route and just say that the maximals came from the sky you know through comets like 
Transformers usually do in these movies. I could always be the case. It's a bit boring. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a total fan of that because it kind of robs the Maximals of some of their uniqueness of being time travelers. And I feel like that mode of transportation is more of a standard Autobot, Decepticon, and even Terracon thing, you know? But yeah. For my next video, I'll probably talk about the Predacons and, you know, talk more in depth about them. Because, you know, there's a lot of, like, mystery surrounding them, especially since the name Predacon never gets name dropped in the movie. And we don't know if, you know, the Predacons are, you know, in league with Unicron. We don't know much about the Scorponox and Predacons in general. I did that or I might make a video talking about who the Terracons are in general and if there's more of them out there. Because I honestly feel that there's a lot to talk about there. But I guess we'll see. If there's any topics around the rise of the beast you would like me to explain or make a theory video on, let me know in the comments down below. And as always guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Do all the annoying YouTuber stuff that the algorithm likes so much. And I will see you guys in the next video. Stay safe guys. Anyways guys, before we go, shout out to our super incredible patrons. Predak King Hunter Plays, Scrub Lordo, Omega Trion 2006, Stage Productions, Xavier the God, Ender Skiers, Optination Reviews, James Newbold, DJ Universe, Tristan Curry, Stellar, Old Spark Studio, Super Sailor Formers Hedgehog, Cuber Night Gaming, Red Cracker 64 Studios Productions, <gasps> Crazy T-Rex, King Sparta, Legend of Soup, The Autobot Side of J, Crawley666, Itsuki, and TF Cypher. And shout out to our incredible big bowl patrons, Jordan the Great and XNOR23 who donated a amount of money. I still won't tell how much it was. But anyways, if you join my Patreon, you get a few rewards. You can watch some of my videos early. You can request a collab with me, some of my videos or your videos, depending on your choosing. You can request some videos from me. So get early looks at some videos that I'm doing and even some that I haven't published quite yet. The list goes on. But keep in mind that it's entirely optional because freedom's the right of all sentient beings. Thank you to my patrons for donating is much appreciated be sure to go and check out their channels they could use all the help they can get some of them do transformers content like i do and some of them do whatever other funny thing they can come up with we have quite a diverse selection here but yeah as always guys thank you so much for your support it's much appreciated and i'll see you all in the next video stay safe guys